Nicholson grew up in Neptune, New Jersey. His father, an alcoholic, abandoned the family soon after his birth. Today, Jack Nicholson is 45 and divorced with a grown-up daughter, Jennifer. I went to talk to him in his dressing room. Can you remember the time in your own childhood or adolescence when you formulated the desire to be an actor? Was there, was there a point, someone you saw or someone who influenced you? Well, no, I would say it was a gradual thing, as it probably is with most people. Uh, it's an unusual choice of occupation for a sort of centrally placed male American. You know, when you're out there in New Jersey, you don't suddenly pop up in the middle of your your football practice and say, yes, I'm going to be an actor. You don't, it doesn't do it that way. I probably really started thinking about doing it after I was doing it. And vaguely, when I was working at MGM in the cartoon department, a job which I got really mainly to observe movie making because I was sort of starstruck at that mm -hmm. time. Still am. You started acting in The Player's Ring in Los Angeles. Were they a good group? Very good group, very, you would, a very good thing happened to me there. This is the first production that I actually worked on. I went to the readings for, for two productions. They had two theaters and they'd read for two full productions, which two plays of any kind more or less will cover every actor in Hollywood who's not immediately working at that time or about to be not working. And I got to, saw every, got to see everybody read and that was very encouraging to me. I noticed, you know, almost no one read well, and I thought, well, this isn't so bad, you know. Not such a huge mountain from that moment on, and I, I think it was a, a freak occurrence that an actor would get to see that in a professional situation with the same actors who were competing for the television shows and the films, for the most part, and get to suddenly see them all in that most naked of all acting postures, reading for a part. It's, uh, it is the toughest thing to do, I suppose. And as a result of that, I always read very well. The turning point for you was certainly Easy Rider. Someone told me that you modeled, modeled your part, the part of the Southern Lawyer, on LBJ. Well, I, I didn't have the normal length of time that you would have to study a dialect, and since the character was from Texas, and some of the speeches that he had were sort of evangelical, Johnson's speech pattern, and which was familiar to my ear at this time from hearing it and so forth. You know, I mean, I didn't put it out in front as an imitation, but it was something true that I could refer to. I understand you turned down The Godfather and The Sting. Yes, that's true. And I, 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 I think I had enough business acumen, I know I had enough business acumen by then to know that the that both The Sting and The Godfather were going to be huge hits. Mm -hmm. At the same time, I happen to think that Last Detail and Chinatown are, <laughs> uh, to me, they were the more interesting of the films. Godfather was going to be a good film. I'd always wanted to work with Marlon, but the, uh, I was asked to play the lead in it, and A, I felt it should be an Italian person. And B didn't have any scenes with Marlon in the script I read. And I thought, well, I'm liable only to get to work with Marlon once. And let's hope that it might be something where we really had to work together. When you eventually did work with Brando, I understand you call him the guy on the hill, is it? The big man on the hill. Why do you call him that? Well, he lives up the hill from me. <laughs> Well, when eventually you did work with him on Missouri Breaks, was it worth the wait? It's, it's something to watch him work, you know. I mean, I, I, I always feel I have a very private slant on him anyway. Uh, pr by private, I don't mean through exposure to him, but just the way I view him based on what I do, what he does, uh, you know, the things that you can't fool and the things that you can fool people with. And uh, he's... An, you know, you'd be a fool not to. I mean, every actor would want to work with Brando. The Shining was directed by Stanley Kubrick, and in the, in the film industry, at least, his name attracts more mystery than anyone else's. What's he like? What's it like working with him? He's perfectionist, 
as almost everyone we've discussed would fall into that personality characteristic. They're a perfectionist. But I mean, on a more provable level, I mean, you know, it's different in a movie sh situation if you say, how was it to the operator? Stanley has the teleprompter now, so he knows. And the amount of reasons that he has why a, a take is not acceptable is, you know, quintessentially perfectionist. Many stars, Paul Newman I know, having struggled to become famous, then abjure the fame. Does it bother you? It's, it's no, it's not a burden as such. I mean, about all these things that are touchy, uh, I think the job is to not have them be touchy, you know? I mean, you, you, it's like you asked about, do I believe in ghosts or whatnot? To me, if it's outside what's naturally viewable, it's a, as big a waste of time disbelieving something as it is believing it. You know what I mean? Hello? Yes. Hi, darling. Yes, I'm... You're on film now, honey. What do you think, Viv? What? Who is it? It's Toots. No, I, they just want to know when I'm coming for dinner. Tell them to keep it in the oven. Yeah, uh, it'll be another 15 minutes or so, so figure me in an hour. Who's coming? Uh, I, you, fine. You arrange all this. Anything's, anything's fine with me. Okay, doll. See you later. Bye. Um, who's Toots? Angelica. And so, if you, uh, you know, I mean, you wait, you try, you irritate yourself if you get. Uh, you know, if you think you're going to have privacy in a situation where obviously you're not going to. I mean, I now have some devices to secure it. Jack Nicholson. I'm afraid I, I don't know if the supper got burnt, but it's reassuring to learn that film stars can be subject to the same domestic pressures as we ordinary mortals.